Welcome back to Programme 5. I uh, didn't think it would go this long. Um, your response has been incredible. Thank you so much to everybody who's subscribing. It means so much. So here we go, Programme 5. So today um, we're fretting, fretting the neck. Got it on the bench, got my press out. Which is literally just a one ton arbor press, I think it's called. Normally the post is solid. I've tapped it through so that it'll take the actual fret press. And that way I saved myself hundreds. I think the press itself was quite modest, but you know, you pay stupid money for these things if they've all already got a hole in. Got my fret wire. I like, um, I like quite fine fret wire. I don't like jumbo frets. All I do is measure it roughly with a good overlap, uh, cut it, tap it in at least one end, and then I put it into my press, and then bring that gently down onto it. Make sure it's lined up. I don't want it coming out again. I don't use super glue or anything like that. And there it is. Cut them off at an angle. Give yourself a chance. Don't cut them off flush like that. Cut them off at an angle, you're gonna lose it anyway. There we go. Repeat another 19 times. And just like that, you have a fretboard. It's uh, yeah, unplayable at the moment because the edges are so sharp, they literally tear you to pieces. They are vicious. To take those nasty sharp edges off, you can use these. What I've done is I've bought some files and I've snapped the points off and ground them down. I have no teeth on one side, which helps in certain operations where you just want to get, where you want to protect the wood. Um, feels safer, feels effective. I'm now going to use this, which is from Guitars, Guitars and Wood in Portugal. Um, it literally is a, a file that's been set into a bit of wood with a nice angle on it, which is ideal for chamfering off and angling the edge of the frets. And I'm just going to run this down to get the angle, and then I'll swap it over to the other side. One day I'll find a use for this thing. Absolutely bloody useless. Never used it for leveling files. I keep trying to find a use for it. Ah, useless. Better off with a file. Ah. You live and learn. Uh, I've added a veneer to the top of the headstock. Literally just a thin piece of mahogany cut on the bandsaw, cleaned up and then stuck on the top, and then the edges trimmed off and sanded down. And uh, yeah. When I get to this stage, uh, what I like to do is to just put some sanding sealer, something like that, to bring out the color of the wood. The grease from your fingers can get into the wood uh, and you end up with marks that you can't uh, get rid of. I just like to get them sealed so that they're just a bit more resilient. Sunburst on the back, a little bit of uh, amber on the front, take the curse off it. Yeah, I think that's going to be worth it. I've just made this using Adobe Illustrator. I traced over an archive picture of the guitar, and this is then going to go on the guitar. And that is my next job. As chance would have it, I've uh, got a nice little off cut here. Let's get something a bit wacky on there. I think this is a nice bold pattern. I think it's uh, suitably retro, and uh, I think it'll look dynamite on there. I 
see it now, it's looking good. Yeah, I'm pretty, pretty chuffed with that. Perfect for this sort of thing. Bit noisy though. to overstate how useful cabinet scrapers are. Once you get them sharp, they are just brilliant. And for something like this, I can now just go like that and it just takes it off. Incredible. If you haven't got one, you can use a Stanley knife blade or an Exacto knife blade. I don't know what you, some sort of model knife blade. So it's just a question of going over it, uh, trying to flatten these edges off, get them as nice and flat as possible um, and smooth. And um, what I'll do is I'll just take the, the worst of it off, get the burrs off, like this, turn it over. I'm not going to go nuts with this for now, it's just to get the shape solidified. 240. This is ridiculously useful. Basically, it's just a piece of plastic with some sandpaper wrapped around it. I use it all the time for this sort of thing. Works a treat. <laughs> it's funny how much you're actually building stuff involves making tools. Uh, I've got bits of sandpaper stuck to all sorts of things. Pens, um, handles of files, all sorts of things end up with sandpaper on them. Right, I think we're close enough. And here we go. Scratch blade. Exciting. Ooh. Oh, look at that. This has got the internal, actually it's tear it all off. What the hell? We're gonna end up shining it up. Ideally you would leave that on until you're all finished and it goes into a showroom, but this isn't a showroom guitar. This is, um, a guitar to be played, so I'll probably reshine this up. Isn't that nice? Mm. I've been doing quite a lot as I get older, is I wear two pairs of glasses when I have to do close-up stuff, really close-up stuff, I mean like macro stuff. Um, and today, what we're doing is putting the little side dots in the guitar. I've done these already. You drill a hole exactly where you want them, put the post in where it needs to be, and then you cut it off. That's the sort of thing we're looking at. The observant amongst you will have noticed a difference here. It's a different colour, isn't it? Well, today I saw some weather and I quickly leapt on it because I could actually spray outside. Can't spray in inside, it's just too, too nasty. Um, you just can't get rid of it in here. I sprayed the front of it very lightly, very lightly with a little bit of vintage amber. I did pre-dye the sides with a bit of water-based uh, colour. Mostly it's uh, a tobacco brown around the edge with a little bit of vintage amber in the middle just to give it a little bit of shape because it is actually completely flat. The neck, I gave a quick coat of tobacco brown but basically I'm very chuffed with this. I think this is looking nice. This, this top, because it's a single piece of spruce, it's not a piece of plywood so the grain only goes in one direction and I've just chopped out two squares of it leaving a sort of bridge between the two pickups just here. I don't want to do this too much, but this bit here is so weak. I could literally just push down with my fingers now and snap that. So I think I'm going to have to put a piece of wood inside here to give it some strength. Stop this just literally, I mean, it's like a matchbox. Way too thin, too weak. I've decided to take this piece of uh, mahogany and I'll slot this in through here. Um, glue it up before it goes in, put it in very carefully and then clamp it up so that it basically is on the underside and hopefully that will get rid of that potential, potential future problem. So hopefully when I come back from my lunch that will be glued nice and tight and we can get on with the rest of it because I want to cut out a control cavity. I've just chopped out this shape for the control cavity. Uh, again, this is a bit weak here. Uh, it's just a bit of spruce and there's a little piece here which is unsupported. So I think another piece 
of uh, mahogany stuck to the inside is what's going to happen there. We've got some uh, clean up to do here. So just try and make, try and make, these, uh, make these sides a little bit more neat. A bit of sandpaper wrapped around a pen works a treat. Yeah, I think that's probably good enough. Habit, when you make acoustic things, you try not to make too many sharp angles. <laughs> I don't know why. I think there's a, a latent belief that uh, it's more musical. <laughs> I don't know. Let's stick some glue on it. Let's see if I can slip this in without getting glue everywhere all over the top of the top. That's good. These clamps are brilliant. These red ones come from Lidl and they're far better quality than anything else. Go figure. So if you know where to get these red ones, apart from Lidl, tell me. I think that's gonna do the job. You know, I've got to put pickups in here, but of course I've got a little spine down the middle of the back. And I've also got to screw the pickup, which has got two locating screws, into something. So I need a block. I need a block to go in there so that the, the pickup doesn't fall flat into the box every time. But, you know, I've got to make something to go in there. So I just did. Literally just a piece of tulip wood, I think. I've put some glue on the back. I'm going to squidge it around with my finger. I'm just going to let, get it into position, drop it. There it goes. And that fell pretty much into the right position. I mean, all these extra bits of wood that I'm having to put in to reinforce the body are basically because of the decision I made to, to use tone woods like a lovely bit of spruce for the top. The downside is that it's thin and it's weak uh, and it moves and it uh, wants to warp um, and it may not have any effect on the guitar tone at all. But, you know, it's just doing it the right way, I think. These reinforcing blocks will add to the weight of the body, which is no bad thing. Um, whereas the original one was made of uh, plywood, so it was actually quite boxy and actually has, uh, probably gives it its sort of banjo tones. But, you know, we're trying. Some people would say, I'm very trying. These screws go through the P90 and they need to go into something behind um, so that it can be spring mounted and you can wind them up and down. So I've built these little platforms which uh, sit on a bridge that sit over the spine, uh, which I'm now regretting ever fitting, but the spine actually does help. And these surrounds, I'm gonna make out of my material and they're gonna go on top. Trying to make these has been quite a business. Trying to get the uh, P90 nice and tight in the middle of there. Uh, got one really quite well. That was really a good one, but then I peeled off the plastic uh, coating, only to find that I was actually peeling off the uh, shiny coating, the finish. Um, don't know how that happened. I think these things, if you sit them around for a while, they uh, they, they separate a bit, I don't know. It, um, it was a real shame, so that one's a bin job, but it's useful as a template to make the others which I have done. I've got this one roughly cut out, and now I've got this one, which is, of course, the other way around, because the points, these little points here, face each other on the guitar to give it its unique style. So I've got to cut this one out, so here we go. We are so nearly there. One last program to go, I think. We gotta get some strings on this. We gotta hear what it sounds like. Thank you as always for subscribing and I really hope we can do something very similar to this soon. I look forward to seeing you. Bye-bye.